τα πιο απομακρυσμένα μέρη του πλανήτη μας μπορούν να αποκαλύψουν τα μεγαλύτερα μυστήρια. Παράξενα σημάδια κρύβονται σε μια παγωμένη αγωνηγή. Kind of Απόκρημνη βράχοι προστατεύουν έναν χαμένο κόσμο. This is like a relic from the age of dinosaurs. Ένα παράτυπο χρώμα αποκαλύπτει το μέλλον του πλανήτη μας. We are talking about acres and acres. It's a total anomaly. Οι συνέπειες του πολέμου ξεσκεπάζουν ένα πρωτοφανές μυστήριο. It's one of the best kept secrets of our planet. Period. Όπου κοιτάξουμε στον πλανήτη μας υπάρχουν στοιχεία του παρελθόντος. Στη φύση, σε κτίρια, σε κοιμήλια. Το καθένα κρύβει ένα μυστήριο που τώρα η επιστήμη μας επιτρέπει να εντοπίσουμε από ψηλά. Ποια νέα μυστικά αποκαλύπτονται... Κάποια μέρη του κόσμου είναι τόσο απομακρυσμένα, τόσο εχθρικά, ώστε τα μυστήριά τους έχουν χαθεί στο χρόνο. Ακόμη και τα πιο απρόσιτα μέρη αποκαλύπτουν τώρα πια τα μυστικά τους. Όπως εδώ, στη Φινλανδία, χίλια χιλιόμετρα βόρεια της πρωτεύουσας Ελσίνκη, πάνω από τον αρκτικό κύκλο βρίσκεται μια απέραντη παγωμένη τούνδρα από χιόνι και πάγο. Εκεί, όπου σκοτεινά μυστικά βρίσκονται θαμένα. This is a brutally unforgiving landscape. It's really hard to believe there's anything here but just mile upon mile of wilderness. It's so remote, just getting here is an achievement. Κάτω από το χιόνι, τον πάγο και το μόνιμα παγωμένο έδαφος, κάτι περίεργο τραβάει την προσοχή. There's something there. I mean, it's hard to see, it's faint, but there's definitely something. Σκούρα στίγματα πάνω στο χιόνι. Κύκλοι, ορθογόνια, παραλληλόγραμμα, ακανόνιστες γραμμές. It's so remote, so alien. It could literally be anything. It makes it really hard to imagine why they're here. Τι είναι αυτά τα απόκοσμα ίχνη στο χιόνι? These are actually really quite big. I mean, they're over 100 meters long. So just what are these bizarre markings? What could possibly explain this? Γιατί βρίσκονται εδώ στη μακρινή Αρκτική; We're in the middle of nowhere in a brutal landscape. What's going on? Πια μυστικά κρύβουν. It's clear that something unusual is happening in the remote reaches of northern Finland. History has a habit of throwing up surprises in the most unlikely of places. Ένα μυστήριο κρύβεται σε αυτές τις παλιές ασπρόμαυρες φωτογραφίες. Όμως, όταν οι αρχαιολόγοι αναζητούν τα ίδια στοιχεία χρησιμοποιώντας δορυφορικές εικόνες... Summer, Τι συμβαίνει στη Φινλανδική Αρκτική? Thinking, In some places, you get what are called ice volcanoes on frozen lakes. These weird formations caused by the action of wind and waves. You can also get these really strange things called snow rollers. When the top layer of snow is really thin, all it takes is a simple breeze to create snowballs out of thin air. But these massive shapes and lines, as strange as they are, seem intentional. You can even say they look designed. Όταν οι ερευνητέ εξετάζουν την περιοχή χρησιμοποιώντα το σαρωτή LIDAR, βρίσκουν στοιχεία για κάτι παραπάνω. LIDAR is incredibly useful for producing 3D scans of the ground because it can pick up on tiny details that are not visible with the naked eye. Ανομαλίε, αλλά όχι στην επιφάνεια. Το έδαφο έχει σκαφτεί βαθιά κατά μήκο εκατοντάδων μέτρων. It's a game changer because this is no snow sculpture. It's evidence of human activity on the ground. Ποιοι ήταν εδώ και γιατί έσκαψαν εκτενώς το παγωμένο έδαφος σε όλη την περιοχή. Το 2015 οι ερευνητές επισκέπτονται αυτήν την απόμακρη τοποθεσία για να την εξετάσουν από κοντά. And they find evidence of human activity. What look like large circular compounds in the bedrock and the permafrost. So you can see these clear stone circles on the ground. Stones piled one on top of another. 
Μήπως είναι η βάση κάποιου είδους δομής. Αλλά γιατί εδώ... Very few people choose to live in this part of the world, but there is an indigenous community who have been here for thousands of years. The Sami are known to be nomadic reindeer herders, and their territory covers this huge swath of the Arctic across four countries, so they're certainly in this area. When they're traveling with their herds, they build temporary structures called lavu. These are similar to tents, like teepees built out of poles and animal hides. The key word here is temporary. Αυτά τα χαρακόματα υπάρχουν εδώ και δεκαετίες. So, if not the Sami, then who? Μια άλλη τοποθεσία λίγο πιο πέρα κρύβει μια απάντηση ένα στοιχείο. And what they find on the ground is incredible. It's like a scrapyard in the wilderness. Pieces of rusting junk everywhere. Some are flat, some are corrugated, some are in long strips. Δεν υπάρχουν μόνο σκουριασμένα, πεταμένα μέταλλα, αλλά και σκαμμένα καταφύγια. No one would build something of this size in a remote location for no reason. It had to serve an incredibly important function. Τι μπορεί να ήταν; Μια συγκλονιστική ανακάλυψη δίνει την απάντηση. Χιλιάδες άδγοι κάλικες από φυσίγγια. Suddenly, it makes total sense. This place was a war zone. The structures and lines from the aerial photography are evidence of military dugouts, trenches, and shelters built during World War II. It makes sense that the images from the aerial photography are part of these military works, temporary fortifications, you know, built of snow and ice. Παρότι οι οχυρώσεις έλειωσαν, παρέμειναν στο έδαφος τα σημάδια από τα σκαψίματα, ορατά μόνο με το LIDAR. The key to understanding this is the terrain and the remoteness of this location. To dig yourself in, here of all places, means you've got to be pretty desperate. Ποιος θα μπορούσε να πολεμάει εδώ, στα πέρατα της γης? You have to ask yourself. Why build military dugouts, trenches, and shelters in the middle of nowhere? Who or what were they defending? When the Second World War broke out in 1939, Finland was given the support of the Soviet Union, known as the Chimerinos War. In a fragile new country, it faces the threat of the mighty Soviet Union. It's one of those forgotten stories of the Second World War, but no less disturbing for all of that. Οπότε μήπως αυτές οι αμυντικές κατασκευές είναι από μινάρια του χειμερινού πολέμου; Stamped onto the lid of an old drum is this word Feuerfeuerlich, which means flammable in German. So what were the Germans doing in northern Finland? The more you find out about this site, the more questions that cry out to be answered. Λίγο πιο πέρα μέσα στο παγωμένο έδαφος οι ερευνητές βρίσκουν μια απάντηση. From the ground, this just looks like a rocky patch of earth. It's only when you go up, way up, and look at it from above, that it tells this cataclysmic story. The LIDAR apocalypses a catastrophic explosion that leads to this hypothesis. It's a scene of devastation. But when you start to put the pieces together, you find out that this is actually the site of a plane crash, and it's a military aircraft. It's said to have been flying with eight other planes, but it malfunctioned and crashed there. Εκτός αυτού, το συγκεκριμένο μοντέλο αεροπλάνου κρύβει μια πολύ σκοτεινή ιστορία. It's a JU-88A4, a Junker. In other words, a German bomber, made by the Nazis. It's mind-blowing. You have the scene of pristine wilderness littered with relics from the war. And it's all because the Nazis were here. But you've got to ask yourself, what were they doing here in the first place? So the big question is, why are we finding evidence of the Nazis in northern Finland? Και πώς συνδέονται με τον Σοβιετο Φιλανδικό πόλεμο; You've got to remember that old saying, which goes, "The enemy of my enemy is my friend." Finland is a small country. It's surrounded on three sides, and sometimes that means that you choose to be on the wrong side of history. 
Ω μία απέλπιδα προσπάθεια αυτοσυντήρηση απέναντι στη σύγκρουση με τη Σοβιετική Ένωση, η Φινλανδία συμμαχεί με την ναζιστική Γερμανία το 1941. So could this explain the remnants of a battle scattered across the tundra? Is this the Finnish defensive line in the face of the advancing Red Army? But there's just one problem. If these dugouts and trenches are meant to defend Finland against the Soviet Union, then they're in the totally wrong place. Ο Σοβιετικό κόκκινο στρατό εισέβαλε στην Φιλανδία από τα Ανατολικά, ενώ αυτέ οι στρατιωτικέ οχυρώσει βρίσκονται δυτικά. Επομένω, εάν δεν πρόκειται για τον χειμερινό πόλεμο, για ποια μάχη μιλάμε. You go back to the original aerial photos and there's a clue. Not in the image itself, but in when the photos were taken, in 1944. That right there narrows down the investigation. Το 1944 η Φινλανδία διακόπτει τη συμμαχία της με την ναζιστική Γερμανία. You've got this perilous moment in 1944. Finland's been Germany's ally. It's invited the Nazis in. And now, suddenly, as the tides of war turn, it needs to get rid of them. Καθώς οι Γερμανοί φεύγουν προς τα δυτικά, αυτό το τμήμα της βόρειας Φινλανδίας είναι εμπόλεμη ζώνη. In other aerial reconnaissance photos near some of these strange markings, there are also series of darker shadows. It's like a straight line. Μία μόνο εξήγηση υπάρχει. These are bomb craters. This is literally in the middle of nowhere, and yet they were fighting for every single inch of ground. Αυτά τα ανεξίτηλα σημάδια στο τοπίο είναι απόδειξη της τελευταίας επίθεσης των Γερμανών. Και το βόρειο τμήμα της Φινλανδίας είναι το σκηνικό σφοδρών μαχών κατά τους τελευταίους μήνες του 1944. Με το λιώσιμο και των τελευταίων πάγων, ένα ακόμη συγκλονιστικό μυστικό αποκαλύπτεται. Graves. Τι είναι είναι αυτή η τάφη? We know that the Nazis had a series of prison camps here. Ask yourself. How did the Germans do it? How did they build the infrastructure in this wilderness? They used forced labor. Even here, even on the very edges of Europe, nobody was left untouched. They say war is hell, and certainly in this case, hell has frozen over. Just because locations are desolate or we can't get to them doesn't mean they don't hold stories. They don't hold history of the people who came before. Επιτέλου, μετά 80 χρόνια, τα μυστικά από το πολεμικό παρελθόν τη Φιλανδία αποκαλύπτονται από ψηλά. It goes to show, no matter how remote a location or how inaccessible it might be, if you look closely enough, you'll always find evidence of human activity, for good or ill. Μερικέ φορέ, τα πιο απρόσιτα μέρη βυθίζονται στον πάγο και το χιόνι. Ενώ άλλα παραμένουν αναλύωτα στον χρόνο σε μερικά από τα πιο απρόσιτα σημεία του πλανήτη. Δύο τεράστιε υπήρου πολύ πιο μακριά, περίπου 500 χιλιόμετρα νότια τη πρωτεύουσα του Βιετνάμ, υπάρχει μια τοποθεσία με κρυμμένα μυστικά τελείω απρόσιτη. It's not really that far south of Hanoi, but it couldn't be any more different than the city. The first thing you notice is the extensive canopy of trees. There is about 900 square kilometers of virtually uninterrupted jungle, and when you think of getting away from it, this seems a step further. There are no obvious signs of human activity here. You can imagine this tree cover could hide almost anything. Κάτι όμως πολύ πιο απρόσιτο εγύρει ερωτήματα. There's this incredible depression in the ground. It looks almost like a perfect circle, which is unusual in nature. So immediately, it raises questions. Μια τεράστια καταβήθηση με διάμετρο 163 μέτρα στη μέση του δάσους ή με ένα μισή γύπεδο ποδοσφαίρου. There's just something absolutely compelling about this image. It just draws you in, and you have to wonder what exactly is tucked away under the canopy below. Τι γυρεύει αυτός ο τεράστιος κρατήρας στην ύπεθρο του Βιετνάμ; What happened to cause the Earth to just drop away like this? Something this massive doesn't just come out of nowhere. What caused it, and when did it appear? Και πια πρόσιτα μυστικά. There's no way this story ends right here with a simple hole in the ground. Something must be at the bottom of this huge depression, and the question in my mind is what. Και γιατί δεν είναι ο μόνος κρατήρας στην περιοχή. 
there are other crater-like depressions across this landscape. When you think craters, you generally think, what, meteorites or volcanic activity? And yes, there are volcanoes in Vietnam. But none are close enough to cause this kind of damage. So what did happen here? Ίσως οφείλεται στη μοναδικότητα της τοποθεσίας. The Phong Nha Ke Bang forest is located in the Quang Binh province. This is the narrowest part of Vietnam. There's only 70 kilometers between Laos and the coast. Αυτή η τοποθεσία ήταν πολύ σημαντική κατά μήκος της πιο διάσημης διαδρομής στον κόσμο. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was an elaborate system of mountain and jungle paths and trails that ran from North Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia to South Vietnam. It was an essential supply route. The communist North Vietnamese would use it to send weapons, manpower and ammunition to their allies in the South during the Vietnam War. Ποια σχέση λοιπόν έχει το μονοπάτι Ho Chi Minh με αυτό το δάσος και τους κρατήρες του, κοιτώντας από ψηλά βρέθηκε ένα στοιχείο. North Vietnam supplied its troops through Laos. Phong Nha Ke became a supply depot for the communist forces. It was probably an easy target for U.S. airstrikes. Από το 1965 έως το 1975, 7,5 εκατομμύρια τόνοι βομβών έπεσαν στο Βιετνάμ, το Λάος και την Καμπότζη. This is the biggest bombardment in history. Twice as many bombs were dropped here as on Asia and Europe combined in World War II. Το Phong Nha πέστη τη μεγαλύτερη καταστροφή. This was the hardest hit area of the Vietnam War. Οι επιπτώσεις είναι ορατές ακόμα και σήμερα. We know that the locals use American shell casings for everything from cooking utensils to bells. Και το δάσος έγινε ακόμα πιο θανατηφόρο. Nobody knows how many unexploded bombs there are in this rainforest. Those unexploded ordinances are a real danger. Every once in a while, they go off and someone is injured or even killed. It's enough to make even the most hardened explorer think twice before going there. Μήπως οι κρατήρες οφείλονται σε αυτούς τους βομβαρδισμούς? It's certainly feasible, given the amount and the force of American firepower, that these are bomb blasts. Ωστόσο, τα στοιχεία αποκαλύπτουν ότι δεν πρόκειται για σημάδια πολέμου. You can see the ancient growth everywhere and no sign of any recent catastrophe. When you look at the entrances, you can see that they're really old, like thousands of years. Τελικά, η απάντηση στο μυστήριο θα δοθεί από ένα εντελώς στοιχείο γεγονός. So what we have to do is to go back to 1991. A farmer was out in the remote reaches of the jungle gathering wood when he hears this very strange sound. Από το υπέδαφος ακουγόταν νερό να τρέχει και αέρας να σφυρίζει. He reports what he heard, but he can't find his way back. It takes 18 years to find this place again. In 2009, scientists finally make it out here to explore the site and nothing can prepare them for what they find at the bottom of the crater. Ήταν μια συνταρακτική ανακάλυψη. This cave is called Han Son Dun, Cave of the Mountain River. It is by far the largest cave in the world. This looks god-sized. It's epic. The cave scale is beyond anything ever made by human hands. It's hiding right under our noses beneath the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Μήπως αυτό το σπήλαιο χρησιμοποιήθηκε στον πόλεμο του Βιετνάμ. During the Vietnam War, tunnels served as storage, factories and shelter against the torrent of US weapons. Το 1972, οκτώ νεαρές γυναίκες βρήκαν καταφύγιο από μια Αμερικανική επίθεση σε μια διπλανή σπηλιά. American fighters bombed the entrance to the cave and trapped the women inside. 24 years later, the Vietnamese government finally opened the cave and discovered their remains. These women, who fought together, died in each other's arms. Ο κρατήρας Χάνκ Σον Ντόνκ απέχει μόλις 14 χιλιόμετρα από τη σπηλιά των οκτώ γυναικών. Μήπως ήταν άλλη μία κρυψώνα. There is no evidence anywhere of a human presence before the farmer found it in 1991. Think about that for a second, that the biggest, widest cave on Earth wasn't discovered until this century. 
Πόσο μεγάλο είναι! This is a cavern twice as large as its nearest competition. It could house a string of 10747s without touching a single wing. These stalagmites are 20 stories high. Like these are earth-made skyscrapers. These are the largest ever discovered on Earth. Τι άλλα μυστικά μπορεί να κρύβονται εκεί μέσα; You've got to imagine you step into that place for the first time, completely underground, and then you feel something falling on top of you. And it feels like rain. It turns out this cave is so big, it has its own weather. Hot air blows in and evaporates water, and it's big enough in there to coalesce into clouds. And when those clouds hit the ceiling, that water starts to fall. It's one of the only places on Earth where you can get rained on underground. Μόλον ότι αυτό το σπήλιο έχει δικό του μικροκλίμα, τι είδους ζωή υπάρχει εδώ; The key to this question is the huge holes in the roof of the cave, called dolines. They let light in. And where you have light, you have plant growth. There are two places in Hansamdung where you can find miniature jungles, fed by the light from above and flourishing 200 meters below the ground. This is a really unique and unusual geologic structure, and that means that the creatures that we find in there are likely to be the same. Η ζωή θριαμβεύει όπου φτάνει το φως του ήλιου, όμως στα ολοσκότεινα βάθη του σπηλαίου τι συμβαίνει άραγε. No light, no plants. So you'd think, no life. But you'd be wrong. One thing that you learn is that life is infinitely adaptable. Take the most inhospitable place you can find and something will find a way to thrive there. Τι είδους ζωή μπορεί να αναπτυχθεί μέσα στο απόλυτο σκοτάδι? What you get down here is animals who have gotten rid of anything that they don't need. They don't have eyes, they don't have pigment in their skin. They're remarkable. There are things in this cave that don't exist anywhere else on the Earth. Scientists have already identified seven new species in the cave who live in total darkness. It's a place that holds mysteries for years, for centuries to come. Κρύβει όμως και μία τελευταία έκπληξη. In 2019, explorers found out that the cave is actually connected to another. Meaning, this is all part of a huge natural subterranean system. The largest cave in the world just got larger. Just imagine how many more secrets this cave has for us. Θα μπορούσε η εναέρεια τεχνολογία να βοηθήσει να αποκαλυφθούν κι άλλα μυστικά του σπηλαίου. And it all comes back to that tantalizing image of a crater. Now we know what to look for. What we can now do is to use drone technology to scan the surface and we can look for new dolines that may lead to other entrances and other connected cave systems. Πώς μπορεί αυτό το σπήλαιο να μας βοηθήσει να κατανοήσουμε καλύτερα τον πλανήτη μας? I'm always blown away when we discover places like this, places that we never knew existed. Who knows what we'll find? I mean, it's like exploring space without even leaving Earth. There's so much left on this planet still to discover. Όσο απρόσιτα κι αν είναι, τα μυστήρια του φυσικού κόσμου αποκαλύπτονται από ψηλά. Ελάχιστα μέρη είναι τόσο απομακρυσμένα όσο οι θάλασσες του Νότου. Πάνω από 14.000 χιλιόμετρα μακριά από τις ζούγκλες του Βιετνάμ στο βορειότερο άκρο της Ανταρκτικής, υπάρχουν άγνωστα μυστήρια που περιμένουν να αποκαλύφθουν. This is at the bottom of the world, literally. Icebergs, high winds, waves. It's one of the most forbidding places on the planet. Όμως αυτή η συγκεκριμένη περιοχή από τελείω τα κομμάτια πάγου και βράχου κρύβει ένα μυστικό. Το όνομά τους νησιά του κινδύνου. What a name! It tells you everything you need to know. Remote doesn't do it justice. Αυτά τα νησιά κρύβουν ένα επιπλέον μυστικό. Και είναι ορατό μόνο από ψηλά. This area is really hard to get to. If you want to study it, you have to use satellites. And when you look at the Antarctic, you expect to see this expanse of white. It's like looking down at a blank slate. This is the last place on the planet that you'd expect something to be hidden or to see something unusual. Κι όμως σε αυτήν την κατάλευκη απεραντοσύνη κάτι παράτυπο υπάρχει. Why do I see 
pink. It takes you by surprise at first. It's completely unexpected. We are talking about acres and acres. Τι είναι αυτή η περίεργη χρωματισμή. I mean, what could cause something on this scale? It's a total anomaly. Πώς δημιουργήθηκαν. Immediately you start asking, is this a result of some kind of human activity, even in a place this remote? Or is this some kind of geological or biological puzzle that needs to be solved? Τι κρύβεται εδώ που ξαφνιάζει τους πάντες. This could completely change our understanding of life in this region. So what exactly is going on here? Μήπως έχει κάποια σχέση με την απομακρυσμένη θέση της περιοχής; Η κλιματική αλλαγή επηρεάζει τους πόλους πολύ πιο γρήγορα από ότι το μεγαλύτερο μέρος του υπόλοιπου κόσμου. Επομένως, μήπως οι ροζ κοιλίδες οφείλονται στις βλαβερές επιπτώσεις από την ανθρώπινη παρέμβαση. Ocean currents and air currents can carry human pollution to the most remote places in the world, and Antarctica is no exception. All you gotta do is think about all the oil spills, or the amount of plastic that's accumulating in the oceans, or the bleaching of coral reefs. Όμως, αυτές οι ροζ κοιλίδες βρίσκονται πολύ μακριά στα νησιά του κινδύνου. You could think that the discoloration was a result of the chemicals and acids in the rain and snow falling. But then, why would it affect only parts of the landscape? There must be another explanation. What we see is unbelievable. This is not a place you'd expect to find large-scale discoveries. It's totally inhospitable. If the cold and ice didn't finish you off, the loneliness would. Από πάρα πολύ ψηλά, ένα μυστήριο αποκαλύπτεται. It's amazing that something that large might have been undiscovered if it weren't for this overhead view captured on the satellite imagery. There's no missing this thing, right? Like, there's no, is there? Do I see something? You don't have to CSI zoom into this thing. It is right there in your face, pink. So what is it? How did it get there? And why is it making such unusual stains across the danger islands? Μήπως κάτι από την άλλη πλευρά του πλανήτη μπορεί να εξηγήσει αυτό το φαινόμενο της Ανταρκτικής. Think pink in the natural world and there's one image that immediately comes to mind. Flamingos. We've all seen those images on TV of millions of pink flamingos. But how could taking a closer look at African flamingos possibly explain anything about the Antarctic? Ένα πιθανό στοιχείο είναι ο τρόπος που αποκτούν αυτό το ιδιαίτερο χρώμα. They're pink for a perfectly natural reason. It comes from their diet, these brine shrimp that they eat that they find in the salt flats in Africa. But that's Africa. We're talking Antarctica. Polar opposites. Συνεπώς, πώς σχετίζεται η τροφή των φλαμίνγκο με ένα μυστήριο στην άλλη άκρη του πλανήτη? Στην Ανταρκτική ζει ένα άλλο πτηνό που βοηθά στη λύση του ενίγματος. Οι πιγκουίνι. It's kind of counterintuitive. I mean, penguins obviously aren't pink, but in the natural world, you know, you connect the dots. Now, flamingos are pink because of what they eat. But it's what penguins eat, a diet of small shrimp-like creatures called krill that are pink, and that causes an interesting reaction. Penguins aren't pink, but their poop is. And that color comes from what they eat as well. When you see a large area of pink on the snow and ice, it's a total giveaway that penguins have been this way and they've left their um, uh, mark. Of course, you'd think that this is the answer to the question of why there are swaths of pink across the danger islands. There's only one problem with that. If also the epistemologists know that there are so many penguins here, then why are there so many penguins? We've known about this place since the first explorer crashed into it literally in 1842. But since then, because of the dangerous sea ice, there have been very few expeditions that have dared to venture there. Uninhabited, unmapped, it's pretty much unknown. Μέχρι τώρα. Και έτσι ένα από τα πιο δυσπρόσιτα σημεία του πλανήτη αποκαλύπτει κάτι απίστευτο. They discover penguins. Lots of them. This isn't just a colony of penguins, it's a mega colony. 
I mean, what's going on? Where did they all come from? And why didn't we know they were here? Οι επιστήμονες μένουν έκπληκτοι και αποφασίζουν την καταμέτρησή τους. And what they find is absolutely astounding. 1.5 million penguins. That is one of the biggest penguin colonies anywhere on earth. Το οποίο εγείρη την απορία. How do 1.5 million penguins just appear out of nowhere? Πώς δεν τους είχαν εντοπίσει τόσο καιρό. One theory was that there could be a brand new penguin colony on these islands. When you have colonies of these penguins shrinking in other parts of Antarctica, you can't help but wonder if it's just a phenomenon where they're moving to the danger islands. Penguins can swim over a thousand kilometers in the ocean, so it's not inconceivable that at some point in the recent past they swam here. Μία εναέρεια έρευνα όμως στα νησιά του κινδύνου, πριν από 70 χρόνια, καταρρύπτει αυτήν τη θεωρία. Nobody had properly looked at these photos before, because frankly, no one had expected to see anything there. And now, when scientists look at these photos from the 1950s, they see something really revealing. Πιγκουίνι στα νησιά, και μάλιστα πάρα πολύ. If you overlay the satellite images from today, With photos from the 1950s, you can see that the penguin colonies are pretty much consistent. The penguins had been here all along. We simply didn't know. Which suggests that these penguins could have been living there for a very long time. Και όταν οι επιστήμονες παίρνουν δείγματα από τα περιτώματα των πιγκουίνων για ανάλυση, μένουν κατάπληκτοι. This is so much more than just a story about penguins and their poop. This totally changes how we understand the populations of this really important species of bird that lives in Antarctica. The question is, how long have they been there? Is this a recent colony of penguins, or have they been here a lot longer? Τα ιζήματα που λαμβάνονται από τον παρθένο πάγο στα νησιά του κινδύνου δίνουν την απάντηση. So we know that the penguins were there in the 1950s, but what scientists find out is that they've been there for much, much longer. These penguins have been here for thousands of years. And they're still thriving there. I mean, look at how many of them there are. Είναι κυριολεκτικά απίστευτο. The Antarctic seems pristine, but climate change is creating a huge impact. So these penguins live on the ice, but as global temperatures increase, that ice melts, and so their habitat is shrinking. As the waters get warmer, Commercial fishers go after the local krill, which cuts into a really important food resource for the penguins. For penguins, it's the perfect storm. Τότε, γιατί οι πιγκουίνι της Αδελίας ευημερούν στα νησιά του Κινδύνου? Somehow, this specific area has stayed cooler. It hasn't seen the kinds of temperature increases that have been happening in other parts of Antarctica. Now, the ice forms a kind of barrier, essentially keeping krill fishers at bay. And the place is living up to its name. It is way too dangerous for people, which means that, at least for the time being, it's a safe haven for the penguins. Η επίλυση του μυστηρίου των κρυμμένων πιγκουίνων που ζουν εδώ και χιλιάδες χρόνια στα νησιά του κινδύνου μπορεί να είναι το κλειδί για τη δική μας επιβίωση. The whole Antarctic ecosystem is really fragile. Even the smallest of changes can have big consequences, not just locally, but for the entire planet as well. So now we have a baseline, and we can watch those penguins and look at their diet and look at their populations to see if there are any changes that reflect what's happening in the big picture across Antarctica. As long as they're thriving there, we're in good shape. But if things there start to change, we might all be in trouble. Μερικά από τα πιο απομακρυσμένα και απρόσιτα μέρη του πλανήτη κρύβονται στους ωκεανούς του κόσμου. Ωστόσο, κάποια άλλα που βρίσκονται στις Υπήρους παραμένουν εξίσου απρόσιτα. Πάνω από 8.000 χιλιόμετρα μακριά από τα νησιά του Κινδύνου, στη Μοζαμβίκη, στη Νοτιοανατολική Αφρική, οι απομακρυσμένες ορεινές παιδιάδες κρύβουν ένα μυστικό ανέγγιχτο από τον εξωκόσμο. This part of Mozambique is way off the beaten path. There are still places left to explore, places left to discover, mysteries yet to unravel. No one would have had any clue what they were going to find when they went here. Μέσα από τη σαβάνα ξεπροβάλλει ένα παράξενο, απομονωμένο οροπέδιο. 
This mountain is so unusual, it's completely different from anything around it. This is like a relic from the age of dinosaurs. It's almost as if some giant living deep in the earth has punched his fist up through the earth's crust, and that is what has remained, this blister on the surface. Τι είναι αυτός ο ανέγγιχτος, χαμένος κόσμος? It makes me wonder, has anyone ever explored this place? Has any human even ever set foot on top? This thing doesn't look climbable. There's this sheer wall around it that might prevent people from ever having gone up there. Ποιο μυστήριο κρύβεται στην κορυφή του? Could you imagine going up on top of this thing? I mean, that is the greatest adventure you could have as a scientist. What's up there? Και ποια μυστικά κρύβει για το παρελθόν και το μέλλον του πλανήτη μας? This is straight out of any, you know, journey to the center of the Earth. Those old books of exploring and finding a new place. Μερικές φορές τα πιο καλοκριμένα μυστικά του πλανήτη μας βρίσκονται στα πιο απόμακρα μέρη. Το επωνομαζόμενο όρος Λύκο κρατούσε τα μυστικά ενός χαμένου κόσμου μέχρι την τυχαία ανακαλύψή του. One thing that's really remarkable is that this place was discovered by accident. Το 2012 ένας επιστήμονας εντόπισε κάτι περίεργο στις δορυφορικές εικόνες. Sometimes there are really marvelous discoveries to be made in the most mundane things, like a simple dark green dot on a satellite image. Τι είναι αυτή η σκουροπράσινη κουκίδα? It might not look like much, but it changes everything. You zoom in and zoom in and look a little closer and start to realize that there's a lot more going on there than you thought. Αυτό που αποκαλύπτεται από ψηλά αφήνει άναυδους τους επιστήμονες. There's a forest at the top of the mountain that few people knew was there. Human fingerprints have touched pretty much all the land on planet Earth. There are very few places that are left perfectly pristine, and it looks like this is one of them. It's this island in the sky. Almost τι προκάλεσε αυτήν την παράξενη ανομαλία? This mountain stands proud, high above all the surrounding terrain. It may look totally alien, but it's actually a perfectly normal geological feature. Είναι γνωστό ως νησί του βουνού, ένας απότομος απομονωμένος λόφος ανάμεσα στις παιδιάδες. But this one's special because it's so isolated and it is so big. Με τόσο απόκρημνα βράχια, ποιος θα τολμούσε να το εξερευνήσει? This thing, by definition, is a secret. We gotta get up there, and the only way to get up there is to look down from above. Drone footage can really shift our perspective and show us something that we never knew was there. Όταν το drone πέταξε πάνω από το φνό, οι επιστήμονες έμειναν έκπληκτοι από αυτό που είδαν. It's a pristine forest, totally untouched. It's like a glimpse into the past. It's like this living, breathing ecological laboratory. This is a very, very special find. What is the secret that it's hiding? What's up there? Μόνο ένας τρόπος υπάρχει για να μάθουμε. Οι επιστήμονες αποφασίζουν να ανέβουν στο όρος Λύκο. Every step you take on this climb is a step into the unknown. There's just no solid evidence people have ever been up to the summit of this mountain before. Literally, everything here. It could be the first time human eyes have ever witnessed this. Ένα σημαντικό βήμα για να μάθουμε τι συνέβη στο παρελθόν. No one could have predicted this. To say this was a surprise is a total understatement. It was a game changer. And at the summit, it's so dark green, it's clearly a dense jungle. Has anyone been up in the last hundred years? Or is this a place that's been uninhabited for centuries or millennia? Is it possible that no human eyes have ever seen what's on top of this mountain? Got to go up and find out. Όταν οι επιστήμονες φτάνουν στην κορυφή, ανακαλύπτουν μια ανέγκυχτη άγρια φύση. Places like this, where most of humanity has disregarded because it's too difficult to access, is an actual treasure trove to scientists. There's something really special about a isolated ecosystem like this. What we have is basically a, a time capsule. Ποιο αρχαίο μυστικό μας αποκαλύπτει το όρος Λύκο? 
Scientists are discovering new species that we've never seen before. It's separated from the rest of the forest, and so the animals that live there are sort of on their own evolutionary trajectory. We've documented a new type of crab, a frog, a butterfly. It's like we've opened up this treasure box of, of ecological discovery. Αυτό που στη συνέχεια ανακαλύπτουν οι επιστήμονες είναι κυριολεκτικά αναπάντεχο. This thing is supposed to be almost impossible to climb. You'd think that no one would have made it up there in a thousand years. But it looks like someone did. The most shocking thing about this is that there was pottery found. That's an absolute clue. Somebody made it to the top and they left something there. That is truly remarkable. Αλλά ποιοι ήταν αυτοί? Because this mountain is so steep and so difficult, there's a piece of my mind that is thinking, okay, why was it so worthwhile for these people to take such a tremendous risk to make it to the top? So it's a really interesting puzzle. Μήπως οφείλεται στο βουνό? Perhaps it was a holy place that had this deep significance for the earlier population that lived there. We know that throughout history, mountains have had a special place for people in their spirituality and in their religions. I mean, you think of Uluru in Australia. That's a place that draws many people and has done for thousands of years. Σε όλο τον κόσμο τα βουνά κατέχουν ιδιαίτερη θέση στην ανθρώπινη θρησκεία και μυθολογία. Στην εβραϊκή πίστη το όρος Σινά, ο Όλυμπος για τους αρχαίους Έλληνες και το ιερό όρος Καϊλάς στο Θιβέτ. Μήπως και αυτό το βουνό ήταν ιερό. It is certainly the kind of place that I can imagine people would revere or worship and perhaps go to tremendous effort to get to the summit. We often underestimate the ingenuity of those who have come before us. And yet we are shown example time after time of ancient people accomplishing really amazing things. Τι ήταν αυτό που έκανε εκείνο το βουνό τόσο σημαντικό; You have to look at where these pots were found. They were placed at the source of a stream which flows down the cliffs as a waterfall. Water is the most fundamental resource for human life. So if these people thought that offerings could keep that water flowing, that would be worth risking your life to get up here. Οι άνθρωποι που άφησαν αυτά τα αντικείμενα ίσως θεωρούσαν το όρος λίκος μια πηγή γνώσης και σοφίας. Και τώρα το βουνό εμπνέει εξίσου και τους σύγχρονους επιστήμονες. It really is a window into our past. By studying the summit of Mount Liko, that really gives scientists an idea of what an untouched wilderness should look like. It can tell us a lot about ecology, about climate change, about the effects that humans have on our environment. So by looking back, we can aim forward. One of the most amazing things about forests like this one is that they act as carbon sinks, pulling greenhouse gases out of the air. And untouched forests like Mount Liko can capture three times as much carbon as forests that we've already exploited. This tells you just how important these last vanishing places are and how hard we should be fighting to save them. Not just for the sake of history or the ecology, Sites like Mount Liko are an incredible gift in our fight against climate change. Ο πλανήτης μας μπορεί να είναι ένα εχθρικό και επικίνδυνο μέρος με παγωμένα απόβλητα, επικίνδυνους βράχους, κυματώδεις θάλασσες και απροσπέλαστες ζούγκλες. Μόνο τώρα, χάρη στην εναέρεια τεχνολογία, μπορούμε επιτέλους να μελετήσουμε αυτές τις τελευταίες απρόσθετες τοποθεσίες και έτσι ανακαλύπτουμε ότι κρατούν ζωτικά μυστικά για το παρελθόν και το μέλλον μας. Μας διδάσκουν την τραγική ιστορία μας και τους λαούς που χάθηκαν στο χρόνο, τη μοίρα του πλανήτη μας και όσα μυστήρια έχουν απομείνει για να αποκαλυφθούν. Μουσική